Adobe Illustrator is an awesome tool for architectural visualizations. It is really good at making simple line work sections, plans, diagrams, and axonometrics. It is also really powerful for creating diagrams that combine line work with soft Photoshop textures. In this video, we're going to cover eight tips that will speed up your workflow and increase your efficiency while using Adobe Illustrator. So tip number one is setting up your workspace correctly. As you can see here, I've opened up a new document in Illustrator and the workspace is really closed up, all the toolbars are hidden and there's not much functionality. In order to speed up your workflow, you want to start adding some toolbars. The first thing I would do is go to the top menu, Window, Workspace, Essentials Classic. That brings up this secondary toolbar across the top that contains some information about stroke. The second thing I would add to this workspace is by going to the right, opening out the Layers window, putting that toolbar at the top because you're going to use that the most often. I'd also open out the Stroke window and drag that out. Click the Three Lines menu, Show Options. That'll give you more functionality again, which is also important because being a vector program, you're going to be using strokes a lot. These properties and libraries panels, I would drag them out and delete them because I almost never use them. I would also go to the top of the window and go to Pathfinder. This window also contains Align and Transform. Now I use Align the most, Pathfinder the second and Transform the third most. So I'll drag that down the bottom of the workspace. I would also go to the right again and open out the swatches window, drag that out and place that under the layers panel. And now you're pretty much there. Now you've got a lot more increased functionality across the right hand toolbar and the top toolbar. When you're working with Illustrator, you can't do any work efficiently without using the layers panel. As soon as you bring your drawing into Illustrator from Rhino, AutoCAD, SketchUp or whatever, you need to separate out your content into layers. If you're going to separate out your content, you could select everything individually, which is going to take you ages, or you could just use the advanced selection option. Tip number two is using the advanced selection options to speed up your workflow. The advanced selection options are at the top of the window under select, same. Now you can use appearance, which will select all the objects that are similar, and that takes into account all of their attributes. Or you can use more specific selections like fill color, stroke color, stroke weight. So in this drawing, everything's in the same layer. Now, if you wanted to separate out all the wall elements, make a new layer called wall on the right, select the thick line that is the wall and go select, same, stroke weight. And that's got out all the lines that are exactly 0.567 points wide. So you drag that up into a new layer. And as you can see, that's got it. Now, let's say you wanted to get these gray view boxes out on the right. You could select one and go select, same, fill color. Now, as you can see, that's got everything with a black fill or gray fill, and that's got the numbers, so that's not going to work. Now, if you try select same appearance, that got them, because that also took into account options like opacity, and you can separate those out into their own layer. Now, once your drawing is out into all nice, neat layers with everything selected individually and put into the correct layer, you can start to edit the drawing a bit better. Tip number three is using the advanced functionality of the layers panel to select, isolate, and lock layers separately. Now, in the layers panel, there's a lot of different functionality you can do that's gonna speed up your workflow. You can use this little dot on the right-hand side to select everything in that layer without having to individually lock everything else and push Control A. You can simply click this little dot and it'll select everything in that layer. You can Alt-click on the visibility symbol and that will isolate the visibility to just that layer. Now, that also works with locking where it locks everything except that layer. Using this advanced functionality of the layer panel will enable you to work on your drawing a lot quicker and not have to waste time. Tip number four is using the recolor artwork tool to recreate color palettes within drawings. In this drawing, there is already an established color palette. If you wanted to change the color palette of this drawing, you could select each object individually or you can select all of the colored objects you wish to change. Go edit, edit colors, recolor artwork. Now the recolor artwork panel opens and as you can see each of the individual colors are open. On the left is the color that is already there and on the right will be the color that it will change to. Now you can change all of these colors here and you'll have a completely recolored artwork. Tip number five is releasing clipping masks and expanding imported PDF files. 
A lot of programs, when you import a PDF into Illustrator, everything here is in a clipping group and you can't access individual lines. To release clipping masks, select all the objects and press Ctrl Alt 7. And push this a few times to make sure you release all of the components. Now, at this point, there's probably going to be some groups in here. And if you do get a group, simply select it, right click, ungroup. Now, as you can see, we can actually access the individual lines and components of the drawing. Tip number six is duplicating objects. In Illustrator, you could copy this tree by selecting Ctrl C and Ctrl V, and that just places it on the artboard, but then you'd still have to reposition it. However, there is a way to quickly duplicate objects and repeat the process. Simply select the item you wish to duplicate, hold down Alt, and drag the new object to the position you want. Now to repeat this process, push Ctrl D, and that will repeat the last command. Tip number seven is pasting in place. If for example, you wanted this item to be on the exact same space on this page, you can simply select a square, push Ctrl C to copy, and then click in the artboard you wish the item to be pasted into, then push Ctrl Shift V. If for example, this was a layout where you wanted this title bar to be pasted into all the layouts, instead of using the last command, simply copy the item with Ctrl C, then click in any other artboard and push Ctrl Alt Shift V to place into the same spot on all the artboards. This command also works in InDesign. Tip number eight is transforming patterns and fields. As you can see here, there's a grass pattern. The scale is too big and the grass texture appears out of scale in relation to the rest of the drawing. Now, if you want to scale this down, you could go into the swatches panel and edit the pattern, or you can simply transform the contents of the swatch without affecting the overall shapes. If you go right click, transform, scale. Now obviously you can see here that the entire fill areas have been scaled up. If you untick transform objects, the transformation will only be applied to the contents of the fill, not the fill borders themselves. Now if you try a smaller scale in the uniform scale box, you should see that the scale of the pattern will get smaller. In Illustrator, there's a number of places where you go to find patterns. The patterns I use most often are found in the swatches panel, you click the little library icon, go to patterns, basic graphics, and either dots, lines, or textures. Textures has a lot of really good ones for architecture. Now let's say you want to apply this paving pattern, but as you can see, it doesn't align with the building or the orientation of the space. If you want to change the rotation of the pattern inside the fill area, simply right click, transform, rotate, and again ensure that the transform objects button is unticked and preview is on. Now you can change around this value here until you get at the orientation you want. Now, as you can see in these patterns, the thickness of the line inside the pattern is too thick and is too bold for the overall drawing. Now, if you go into the swatches panel and edit the swatch that is currently being used by double clicking, push Ctrl A to select all of the lines and here you can change the stroke thickness and color. Now let's try a different value and you'll be able to see the change in the drawing. Now simply double click outside this workspace and you'll be returned back to the original view. Now as you can see here, the colour and line thickness of the fill is a lot better. That's it for this video guys. Please let me know down in the comments if there are any other tips you would recommend or anything you'd like me to cover in a future video. Cheers and thanks for watching.